Hello and welcome and thank you for joining me. Today we're going to look into my top flow features coming up with Summer 22 and we're going to start with Record Triggered Flow. So the first feature is um, now you can use Formula Builder inside the Record Triggered Entry Condition. So if I go to create a new flow, just to show you quickly, um, I'm going to select Record Triggered Flow, Create, and I'm just going to pick Account here as my object. Record is created and the entry condition now you can have a formula values to true and you can now actually also use this nice formula builder here so if i wanted to just say you know give me text functions and it is very similar to process uh, builders that we used to do before um, just going to pick um, text because i want to use a pick list here so i just wanted to say if industry is something and this is really simple uh, example, but it, you can of course get complex with your formula. I wouldn't need to use this formula normally, but this is just for example purposes. And I'm just gonna say industry agriculture. And actually you, it will let you save it. Um, but if you wanted to be 100% sure that your formula is correct, you can hit check syntax and that will tell you if there's a mistake in your formula. So telling me, you know, I have a gap here in equal to. So I can fix that right here instead of saving the flow and then letting the flow error out on save. So this saves you some time. And also I'm hoping that like, this capability will be available while actually creating the formula in the flow. I'm gonna hit done. Like if I try to create a formula here um, inside the flow, that is still not available. So you still don't have that formula builder inside the flow, but hoping that will be a future enhancement um, coming up that would be really nice to have. I'm just going to hit save here. Alright so moving on to the next enhancement is more around um, flow trigger and if you haven't uh, played around with flow trigger exploration it's a really cool feature which I highly recommend to check it out. It was already come came last release but now if you go to flow trigger explorer and you wanted to say, you know, look at all the opportunity flows when the record is updated or created. You can do all that and it will show you all the different um, flows that is triggering on opportunity creation. So that is already there. But if you wanted to, let's say, change the order of execution right here in this uh, screen, you can now do that. So if I wanted to go give me all the flows when record is updated and just change the order, I can hit edit order here because for whatever reason, maybe I wanted to have the Twilio message sent first, then I wanted to have the reminder. So I can just simply change the order here and that will make sure that this is how the flow executes, which can be really helpful if you have, let's say, approval process firing on one flow and then the other flow is something else depending on that updating of that initial process. So it's really good to have this and you can hit update here. I haven't actually tried this before, so old trigger order, new trigger order, it's gonna hit update and let's see what it does. Uh, and now my Twilio message is first and this is the second and third. So really handy tool um, if you wanted to look at all the flows. Of course, this is a test environment, but if you have so many flows, it's really helpful to have all those. And just another pro tip is I, I always recommend breaking down your flow uh, based on the functionality because if you're working with different business units, it's always good to break those different functionality into different flows. It's easier to debug, it's easier to maintain. And if you wanted to have subject matter experts for one business process, they can al always focus on that flow. And with all these features, uh, to me it appears that Salesforce is also recommending that because they are letting you actually use the order, um, control it and showing everything in one page. So to me, it seems like Salesforce also encourages that to have different functionality, different flow. It's different from having multiple triggers in one object. You can have different multiple flows on the same object under the same uh, like record is updated. You don't need to compl complicate your flow by using so many decision elements. You know, if decision is this, do this and do that. Instead of that, just create a new flow, add the criteria right in the entry conditions. So it makes it easier to actually find which flow is triggering what functionality and now you can also control it so always highly recommend making your flow as simple as possible packed functionality into one flow all right so moving on from here another cool feature that i noticed is 
you can actually now also look at your object so if i'm if i wanted to find all the flows that are an opportunity i no longer have to go to flow to find that out i can just go to object manager and over here before you had triggers now you also have flow triggers so you can actually see all the different flows that is firing on opportunity it of course tell you active or inactive but see these are all my flows on opportunity so it's it's a nice one place to go to if you wanted to look at all your opportunity or account flows for example moving on to the next feature which is writing tests in flow this may be somewhat of a new concept if you are not from apex background we know that with apex classes you always have to write test classes to make sure your code is working as expected and if you are making any changes you have to run the test classes to make sure that code still works as expected so now uh, we have this view test in beta in flow so you can also write tests in flow and the advantage could be that you don't have to always run debug you should still test and debug the functionality but let's say if you made a change you wanted to quickly test it out you can do that using view tests and you have, actually have to write all the assertion so i'm just going to pick a quick uh, very basic example and as i said try this out it will be somewhat of a learning curve um, and this is my first time trying this out as well uh, in the flow so this same taking the same flow that we just did um, we are updating active equal to yes when the industry is agriculture that's my entry condition and that's what i'm updating what if i want to write a test for this so i'm just going to go to view test and it is in beta i'm going to create here and just going to name it test one and by default it's only telling me run the test when the record is created because that is my entry condition and set initial triggering record so i'm just going to set um, test data and this actually does not actually update your account so you don't have to worry about it actually updating the account it's just in rollback it would roll back all the changes and here um, i want to say industry make it agriculture so i can test the functionality and i'm going to now go to assertion so it's the same concept as apex test classes um, you have to write the assertion so what is your expected result here so my expected result is that active equals yes so if i'm creating an agriculture um, industry account i want the active to be yes that's what i'm doing and add a custom failure message so in case this fails account did not get set to yes okay so if there was anything wrong with your flow or it did not work as expected you will get the flow the test will fail so hit save and how do we actually run this so if you go, go back to that view test you can click here and run test and view details here it's saying it's passed my active got set to yes which means my flow is working as expected um, if somebody made a change to the flow for example so like later down the line somebody went into your flow and changed this part to maybe no or maybe left it blank for example right that may happen and i'm just gonna hit save so anytime you're making changes to the flow now you can go back to your test that you initially wrote and run this again now what happens test actually failed um, because the assertion is saying it is expecting the active to be set to yes but actually it did not set yes and because we set a custom failure message i am now seeing account did not get set to yes which means something is wrong and this will tell you to go back to your flow and see what happened why it did not work as expected so of course i'm highly simplifying it here with like one criteria and one condition but you can do the same thing so you can write multiple multiple assertions for multiple expected results you can also test for positive results and negative results so you make sure all the sites work and one thing that i noticed in the documentation is that they're saying it won't work for outside of the flow context so if let's say account the flow passed but there somebody added a validation rule for example and um, the account did not get set to yes this test will not take that into consideration which to me is like um, i would really hope that in future that would actually come in because that's the most where i'm seeing errors mostly is when the validation rule is failing the flow for some reason i would like to see that uh, taken care of within the test that i'm writing so of course this is in beta um, highly recommend trying this out and you can make your flow even more powerful using this feature all right let's move on to some of the screen enhancements so the one enhancement i saw was um, around the beta 
fields functionality so right now I have I just created a simple screen flow and I'm just going to remove everything to show you you can now um, in the fields beta before you could not use name and address I'm just going to pick a var contact and this is something you have to create if you plan on using this so you have to create a variable resource so you can use it and because my object is contact it will show me all the contact fields and now I can actually pull name as well as address before I do that I want to also show you another feature which is around sections so we already can do the section in the flow right but now you can include a header so you can say personal info and this will also give you this like little carrot shape so um, if you have a big screen people can actually toggle that off and on so you can have a bigger form um, for easier uh, input um, and now I'm gonna go back to fields and I'm just gonna pull in this first full name and the mailing address this is also new uh, with summer 22 I'm just gonna add that here so this is all my personal info if I wanted to add more um, section I could do that here and maybe there I can say give me a demographic or something like that um, so that could be another column or another section so now I have demographic section I can add some other maybe mailing address is actually demographic not um, remove it from here and add something like phone under demographic you can keep that mailing address and so on so just some nice features around screen and just giving you more flexibility in how you want your screen to look just going to save that and let's see how that looks in action and the test thing is only available for record trigger not for this one so I'm just gonna say randomly pick one and here you can actually toggle this which is really nice actually I put home phone outside which is fine and address this this is pretty cool next functionality I want to show you in the help document itself um, because this is requiring you to actually participate in the beta or pilot program and I could not access it right now but this is also super awesome and powerful because now you can make your screen flow react within the same um, screen so let's say if you have a custom component like a knowledge search article and you wanted to user to type something in a screen and then the component reacts to that takes that input and so shows you articles related to that input th that the user entered so making the flow more reactive before you'd have to actually put two separate screens one screen they type in the thing hit next go to the next screen then it was able to show you but now it's becoming more reactive so you can put custom components right on the same screen and the user gets like this seamless experience and you're reducing the number of screens as well so really cool feature I'm, I'm excited to try this out and see if you can actually get this in your org and so you can try this out if you have any custom components that you like to play with and there are some general other enhancements as well I'll sh share this link with you but these are the top of the mind for me at least and let me know what other features you liked what is your favorite one thank you so much for watching see you next time